Okay, we're just waiting for one of our um, guests to arrive, but uh, we'll start. We're a Swiss organization that likes to run on time. Um, welcome very much, uh, very much to our fourth press conference today, day two of the Summit on the Global Agenda. This one is about the launch of a new report, The Future of Manufacturing, Driving Capabilities and Enabling Investments. We're digital first here at the Forum, so this is available online. It will be launched immediately, and um, hard copies will be available later. So I encourage you to first look on our website if you want to download um, the report. It's a collaboration with Unido and the Forum, of course. I'm going to keep my words to a minimum. I'm not, by very much means, not the expert on advanced manufacturing, um, but I'm going to introduce first my, my panel. So on my um, immediate left, I have Fadi Farah, co-founder, partner, White Short Partners in the United Kingdom, followed by uh, Jean-Paul Rodrigue, Professor Hofstra University, USA, and a member of the Global Agenda Council, again. Third, we have Augusto Louis Alcorta, Director of Development Policy, Statistics and Strategic Research at UNIDO. After, on uh, Augusto's left, we'll be joined by Badra Al-Amana, who's just um, on his way from another meeting, will be with us very shortly. Badra is the Chief Executive Officer of Strata Manufacturing, which is a Mubada, Mubadada company investee, and also another member of the Global Agenda Council. And right on my, uh, my far left, last but no, by no means least, is Jennifer McNelly, the President of the Manufacturing Institute, and again, a member of the Council. So I'm going to ask, uh, first of all, for uh, Fadi to provide a bit of context around the, you know, the, uh, the, the, the reason for this launch taking place. Thank you, and um, I want to address it uh, through two questions. First, why manufacturing and uh, what we have been uh, doing about it. Why manufacturing? First, it represents about one-fifth of global employment. Secondly, it's a major driver of capital investments, knowledge development, and innovation. And third, according to some analysis, it has a very high correlation with GDP growth. The more you industrialize a nation, the more your GDP grows. Now, the question is, what do we do about it? And this council has been working very hard compiling in this report the future of manufacturing, driving capabilities, enabling investments. What are drivers of manufacturing capabilities? And where are potential uh, investment opportunities? But we also um, are launching a joint initiative uh, together with UNIDO, together with the World Economic Forum, on looking at further dialogue between policymakers, corporations, and society at large, so that those three stakeholders can start to converge on key manufacturing topics and to start having a voice for manufacturing. With this in mind, I would like to hand over to Jean-Paul to tell us a bit more about the content of the report. Okay, thank you. Uh, just to let you know, it's um, about uh, a report with four major sections. Basically, each one dealing with a specific dimension and with the introduction, basically uh, underlying the need to focus more on capabilities more than, let's say, comparative advantages or competitiveness. That's a new term which is coming up. That is, as an economy gets more and more sophisticated, it's no longer an issue of competitiveness. It's an issue of building capabilities to innovate, to continue the growth process. So that's pretty much one of the key points in the introduction process. Then the next uh, chapter was written by UNIDO, which pretty much tried to measure and rank the competitiveness of respective uh, industrial nations around the world according to their, to their index that they've been monitoring for several years. And then a, a third section focused on the apparel industry, were written by uh, Gary Gareffi, which is currently sitting in the room here, which tells about uh, uh, the value chain which has been established around the world regarding this industry and how some countries are growing and expanding this value chain by climbing up and uh, getting, uh, building their own capabilities. And in the introduction, we, uh, sorry, in the conclusion, we pretty much question, okay, where this is heading? Where are the factors that could be disrupting the future of manufacturing? We talk about factors of convergence, that is, which are positive factors, and uh, factors of divergence, which could undermine future uh, global manufacturing growth. And then we underline the need for a forum regarding this, and that's going to be addressed uh, by my colleague. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paul. Um, about two years ago, there was a meeting between the then Director General of UNIDO and some of the members of the WEF, and we discussed at the time the possibilities of collaborating. UNIDO is United Nations Industrial Development Organization, and the WEF had at that time as one of its councils, as 
the Advanced Manufacturing Council. So uh, he said, well, we have lots of areas uh, of commonalities. Why don't we start working together and identify areas that we can develop jointly? At the time, we thought of an initiative that has now been um, implemented where UNIDO is collaborating with uh, the Global, Global Agenda Council in two specific areas. One area is this report, which this one is the first one, uh, where, which we hope will be developed into many more reports and many more, many more knowledge products that we hope we will develop in, in the future. And the second area is an, an event or a series of events that will bring the voice of manufacturing into the global context. But not only the, bring the voice of manufacturing, at the same time we address the fundamental global issues that are being faced by manufacturing at this moment. And that is the collaboration that we're starting between UNIDO and the Global Agenda Council. We would like eventually to develop some principles that will be accepted by the three uh, main constituencies of, uh, of manufacturing firms public sector and society at large, but I'm sure my colleagues are going to develop on, on that point. Pass. So from, from the UAE's perspective, this is a, a, very, a very good initiative that we have, you know, we are very proud to be part of, especially since the report has been launched in the UAE. The UAE is known for its Abu Dhabi Economic Vision 2030 and the UAE's 50th anniversary, which is happening in 2021. Uh, manufacturing is a key component of it, obviously from the diversification perspective, as well as from a knowledge-based economy in terms of building up capabilities. So we are very keen to contribute towards this initiative, uh, use some case examples with respect to, in my, in my case, uh, as an example, is aerospace and building parts for aircrafts. But the UAE, again, is into shipbuilding, steel manufacturing, aluminum manufacturing, and obviously into renewables and semiconductors outside the, the, the UAE. Uh, the concept of global value chains, uh, the concepts of uh, capabilities development, very close and very important to us. So we are very, very proud to be part of this. Thank you. Jennifer. So as we look to the future of manufacturing and as current chair of the GAC, as we begin a new session, we actually ground our strategy both in the context of building capabilities, but really the global value chain. And as we look to this future, we actually bring in the core constituencies of individuals, of governments, and of civil society. And how we do that mutually benefiting all for inclusiveness, sustainability, and sustained manufacturing. Thank you. Uh, happy to open the floor to any questions. Okay. Um, I have a couple, so please indulge, allow me to indulge myself. Jean-Paul, you mentioned the, the challenges facing and opportunities facing manufacturing. You discussed, you mentioned divergence and convergence. Perhaps you could elaborate more on, on these specific challenges. Okay, okay. Uh, what seems to be uh, converging is basically what we talk about around the world. People agree that uh, the future of manufacturing is uh, about skills, about the development of skills, either by the educational system or within the corporation itself. This is uh, very, very important, for instance. Uh, uh, we can talk about also convergence. Countries more and more agree, and the example of the United Arab Emirates is very good regarding this, that they need to be a system that fosters innovation. Uh, and it could be part of national policy, it could be part of individual initiative. That's all a factor, uh, I would say, of, of convergence. Th those are examples we'll use. And what I mean about uh, divergence, what could be problematic about, about the future, and uh, we mentioned here that the issue of, for instance, of uh, political instability could be a great factor. Again, a major reason around the world where there's very little investment in some countries, basically people don't trust the politics, don't trust the, the long-term prospects of, of an economy. Simply, we cannot do business there. And also currency fluctuations could also be a problem. Access to resources are, are, are other examples of, of these uh, factors of divergence, I must say. So that's uh, some examples. Maybe if I could add a few words on this. Um, ultimately, economies that industrialize well are the ones where conversions from those three stakeholders happen. Um, skills development, innovation. And one of the reasons why we're launching or starting this initiative that includes events, summits, and so on, is to have more dialogue between the different stakeholders so that we can look at those factors of conversion 
and push them to other countries so that we create a virtuous circle of industrialization. Any more questions? Last chance. Okay. One more from me, and then we're done. Uh, Badra, you're a, uh, the head of a successful manufacturing enterprise here in the UAE, um, an economy which um, has risen in the global um, competitiveness report rankings that we here produce at the forum um, quite significantly over the past few years. But what would you like to see in terms of policy to enable manufacturing to take off further here, as you say, as you build towards uh, 2030 and beyond? I think we've been very fortunate with the, let me speak about the capabilities perspective, because the report talks about this, and, and, and it's a key theme. Competition in the long term is going to be on capabilities and not on low cost. And that is an important theme here, because when you start talking about developing capabilities and where the next investment will head towards, you want to make sure that there is a capability that exists there that can contribute towards, obviously, innovation and, uh, and the future prospects of the company. So from our perspective, more policy that develops the human capital, more policy that trains the human capital, more policy that enables the human capital to grow and expand beyond the, the obviously the geography of the UAE is something that is very important to us. The UAE is a small market compared to the rest of the world and we obviously see things in global context. Thank you. And again, to, to offer some context on the, uh, the outlook on the global agenda, the report that the, the network put out. Um, on Friday, one of the big challenges, of course, was persistent jobless growth, and another was income inequality. And the mantra that we're hearing a lot over the, part, the course of this summit is, is how to boost innovation, how to drive education, relevant skills, how to enable and empower the you know, gender parity in the workforce. Too. So all of these, we have 86 councils, and I would be surprised if these issues were not uh, being touched upon by almost all of them. Everybody's time is very, very um, precious at, at this summit, so I will um, call this meeting to a close now, but I'd like to thank my panel for joining us, and thank you also for um, attending, and I look forward to seeing you at the next press conference here in 45 minutes. Thank you. Thank you.